Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel and in today's episode we will be looking into the time travel paradoxes through the lens of one of the classic episodes, The City on the Edge of Forever, where there is this character, the Guardian of Forever. And we will look through the Guardian to see how time travel is impacted in Star Trek. The episode will go over the plot, the analysis, the references to other episodes where Guardian is mentioned elsewhere and the paradoxes and risks of time travel. So stick around till the end and let's begin. Now, the city on the edge of forever is the 28th and penultimate episode of the first season. It was written by Harlan Ellison. Other contributors are Steven Karabatsos, DC Fontana, Jean L. Kuhn, and Gene Roddenberry himself made the final rewrite. The episode was directed by Joseph Pavney and first aired on NBC on April 6, 1967. Now let's look at the plot of the city on the edge of forever. Encountering powerful waves of space displacement, which Spock can only describe as ripples in time, the Enterprise tracked the waves back to their point of origin on a previously uncharted planet. This is where the incident occurs. Dr. Leonard McCoy is suffering from paranoid delusions as a result of an accidental overdose of cordrazine beamed down to the surface in an attempt to escape the ship. As a consequence, when the landing party is looking at the Guardian in search for McCoy, McCoy actually leaps through the portal and is transported to Earth's past. His actions in the past alter the timeline so drastically that Enterprise and the reality known to the crew no longer exists. The mission now is for Captain Kirk and Spock to use the Guardian of Forever to follow McCoy into the past just before he arrives there and to repair the timeline they arrive in 1930s New York City, where they must locate McCoy to prevent him from making the changes that would disrupt the history. This episode is widely regarded as one of the best of the original series and a feature pointed storyline involving Kirk and Edith Keeler, whose fate is crucial to the restoration of the timeline. All right, so now some critical questions come to mind. How did Kirk and the landing party survive the aftermath of McCoy's jump? It's unclear how they have survived when everything else has been erased. And perhaps it's some special capabilities of the Guardian. Maybe it's creating a temporal bubble and fixed point of entry and exit around that gate or portal. Uh, and that bubble is protecting the landing party from having been erased and that gives Kirk the opportunity to jump back through the portal and fix the timeline. Another question is, what is the Guardian? Is it somehow related to the Q, the godlike beings in the universe? The Guardian of Forever seems a far different entity. Unlike the Q, it was an artificial creation granted sentience by its long dead alien inventors. Furthermore, the Guardian is quite helpful to the humans it encounters and seems happy that its purpose has been fulfilled. A far cry from the petulance and boredom that marked the queue. Alright, so next let's look at some of the miscellaneous references besides the city in TOS. The author Harlan Ellison expected Guardian to be some sort of a giant and there was supposed to be more than one. Also, the Guardians supposed to generate immense ripples in time that manifest themselves as spatial disturbances and this is what attracted, remember, the Enterprise to the Guardian in the first place. However, in Discovery, when Michael Burnham in the episode Terra Firma goes to the portal, uh, she does not see any signatures coming from the portal and it's very hard to find the portal until they stumble on Carl setting out somewhere in this desolate planet and they randomly stumble across him. 
but it's sort of inconsistent as to how the uh, portal that generated ripples in one episode doesn't generate any signature in the other was there some sort of a cloaking device or some reason why that was happening it's unclear all right so now let's move to the animated series and look at the episode yesteryear which is another reference to the guardian in the yesteryear trek writer dc fontana created a sequel to city where spock used the guardian to travel back in time when he was a child growing up on vulcan note guardian's voice here was performed by james duhan who is none other than scotty now guardian of forever is used twice in this episode first when spock initially travels through the guardian of forever from delta v to his altered present timeline where he discovers that his existence is in jeopardy due to the change in the past the second use is to correct this timeline spock along with captain kirk uses the guardian of forever to travel back in time to vulcan they use it to access and correct the critical moment in spock's childhood thereby fixing the timeline The Guardian also occurs from where the yesteryear occurs to where the later parts of Discovery happen. It seems to be referred in during temporal wars and many attempted to use the Guardian as a means of traveling through time during the conflict. Because of this, the Guardian moved itself far away from the original location and went into hiding. By the 32nd century, it was located on the planet Danus 5. In this next episode, in the year 3189 AD, in Discovery Terra Firma, episodes 1 and 2, Emperor Georgiou is suffering from a severe and potentially fatal condition caused by her displacement in both time and space dimensions. The portal offers a way to stabilize her condition by taking her to a time where the prime universe and the mirror universe were still aligned. Now, Georgiou travels twice through the um, portal. The first time, Georgiou initially steps through the portal uh, when Carl opens for her, sending her to an alternate timeline in the mirror universe. This serves as a test to evaluate her actions and decisions. When she passes this test uh, and returns back to Danis 5, Carl reveals to her that she has passed the test and then he opens the portal again allowing her to step through to a time and place where she can survive without suffering from her temporal displacement illness and then the portal disappears in some more references in an early draft of star trek the next generation episode yesterday's enterprise a vulcan science team used the Guardian of Forever to study history. Their actions inadvertently led to the death of Surak, causing Vulcans to evolve just like Romulans. The timeline was eventually restored when Sarek used the Guardian to correct the historical disruption. In the final version of yesterday's Enterprise, in reality, the Enterprise C emerges from a temporal rift altering the timeline and creating a dystopian future which is corrected when the crew helps the Enterprise C return to its original time. So the draft was not really implemented and it remains just a draft. In another non-canon Star Trek, the Next Generation Q Continuum novels, a younger Q uses the Guardian of Forever to explore new possibilities making contact with the being known as Zero. These novels hint that the Guardian was created by a race that eventually evolved into the Q Continuum. Again, this is non-canon. There are many more non-canon references to the Guardian on Memory Alpha Wiki, which you can explore. Next, let's look at time travel paradoxes. The closed causal loops, consistent paradoxes, like predestination paradox and bootstrap paradox involve a self-existing time loop 
in which cause and effect run in a repeating circle. The predestination paradox occurs when the person traveling back in time becomes part of the past events and ultimately causes the events he is trying to prevent in the first place. The bootstrap paradox, on the other hand, is a paradox in which the object that is being sent back in time results in an infinite loop where the object has no discernible origin. Example of this would be, let's say, Shakespeare of the future goes back in time and before the Shakespeare of the past has written his literary works, gives him the literary works and therefore lets him write those works, this becomes a loop because the origin of the works is unclear. The other kinds of paradox leave to lead to inconsistent timelines. For example, the grandfather's paradox is where if you travel in the past and kill your grandfather, then your father's not born and you don't exist, then this leads to an inconsistent timeline. Another example is Polchinski's paradox, where in this case a billiards ball that is being shot at an angle into a wormhole which then the ball goes through the wormhole travels back in time and then hits itself in such a way then it doesn't go into the wormhole therefore there is some inconsistency even without free will involved there's inconsistency inconsistency just in the motion the mechanical motion leading to this paradox Alrighty guys, so we have come to the end of the episode. Let me know what do you think about the city on the edge of forever, the guardian and the paradoxes associated with time travel in various episodes, be it the discovery episodes with Terra Firma or uh, the ones in the animated series yesteryears. What do you think about these episodes and why do you think the Guardian is not protecting the timelines? Why is it so permissive and actually helping people jump in and try to change these timelines? Is the Guardian aware of something that governs the rules of time where it knows that time cannot be changed significantly? It certainly does, doesn't appear to be so because uh, it seems like uh, McCoy was able to change timelines pretty drastically, erasing the United Federation of Planets and the Starship. So it's pretty dangerous and yet the Guardian is letting people uh, mess with time and that seems pretty strange. So leave me in comments what your thoughts are. If you like the material, please hit like and subscribe. And that is all for today. Until next time, bye-bye.